Hey, all you jazz babies and cat daddies. It's time to close your eyes. You may have had a roaring good time down at the speakeasy, taking your fair share of some giggle juice, but the night is over. Take off those dancing shoes, Sheba. It's all Jake now. All you suits out there, it's time for bed and everything is berries now. Close those peepers and enter the lair of dreams. It has been three years since the release of The Diviners, but The Lair of Dreams is finally here. By page length alone, this book has been worth the wait, because look at this. This book is massive. Lippa Bray does not disappoint with this sequel. Yet again, the 1920s just jumps right off of the page. And I just can't wrap my mind around how much research she must have done. But it doesn't feel like she's that kid in the front row of the class just going, Ooh! Ooh, pick me! I know the 20s! The atmosphere of the 1920s saturates the book, but it's so subtle that you feel like you could jump into the story and just walk around. The fashion, pop culture, the social activism, race relations, ideology, religion. It creates a hyperreal simulacra of the 1920s America. Bray doesn't hesitate to draw on America's dark past either. The trauma and massive changes caused by the First World War. Slavery, lynchings, racism, homophobia. These painful truths that buttress the American dream are the perfect place for the mystic and the magical to seep in. Though you can imagine, it's not very pleasant. The diviners from the last book, Evie, Sam, Theta, Memphis, and Henry, as well as the somewhat normals Jericho and Mabel, have been through the ringer in the last book. They defeated a supernatural serial killer, but their troubles are really just far from over. A sleeping plague has overtaken New York, and people who catch it simply go to sleep and never wake up. Their body is being consumed from the inside, and they waste away. All the while, the man in the stovepipe hat with the crows keeps getting closer and closer to some unknown end goal. Each character has their own problems. Henry is desperately searching the dreams for one of his former lovers. His new friend Ling is dealing with the backlash that hits her community when people start blaming the sleeping sickness on the Chinese community. Evie has lost her privacy when she outed her diviner powers to the world. Sam has sniffed out a few more clues about his mother's disappearance. Memphis is trying to figure out his interracial relationship with Theta, and Theta is desperately trying to hide her diviner powers. There's never a dull moment, and you never stop rooting for these characters. And you know when the ultimate showdown hits, everyone is going to band together and become a powerhouse of divine-busting awesomeness. Even the love triangle doesn't get wearing. In the last book, Evie and Jericho's relationship was the highlight, and by God did they fit. But in this book, when Evie gets stuck in a publicity stunt pretending that Sam Lloyd is her fiancé, you can kind of start to see why she might want to lean the other direction. Evie and Sam are both troublemakers. They're not afraid to break a few rules and get wild. They both eat adventure for breakfast, and when they're sweet to one another, it's, it's really sweet. It's none of that forced crap where you know the heroine should be with the other guy and so she's wasting her time and yours as well. I am still on Team Jericho 100% of the way, and it breaks my heart to watch his heart get broken. And Evie's definitely not going to make a baby that's Jericho's one true love, so there's that as well. I could read this series forever. Lair of Dreams has to be one of the best written teen books of 2015. You're going to want to lick the pages. I don't know how long it's going to be until Diviners 3, but I'm just going to go ahead and guess that it's going to be as amazing as the first two. Thank you for watching, and if you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe down below and check out some of our other videos over here. Don't forget that one! That was our review of The Lair of Dreams. And uh, because we decided we wanted to give you something extra to keep that diviner's high going, we decided to give you a couple of things that were our 1920s-ish that will uh, make your day. Miss Fisher's Murder Mysteries is a TV show from Australia set in the 1920s, which has all the music, all the costumes, and all the fun of the period. You should totally be watching this show. I propose a trip to Australia to break into a costume warehouse. I agree with you. There is also the Tenement Museum in New York. Um, it's not quite 1920s, but y you get the feel of that world that Libba Bray is working in. And not only that, it is just 
really cool, really well run. There is also a podcast on it from mistinhistory.com. You just search Tenement on their website. It'll come up totally amazing. So that is our review. If you liked our review, please subscribe down below or check out our other videos.